Action. Hello, it's Georgie Newbury here at Commonwealth Wildflowers in Somerset, and I'm setting off with my trolley, my trusty trolley, a bucket of water, and a tub. And I'm going to start getting on with some of those jobs I was talking about in yesterday's clip. Uh, so come on with me, and I'm going to start with the tulips. Come on. I love this. This is, if you knew how sophisticated the setup here was, you'd be absolutely hilariously laughing your heads off. I will take a photograph of what I've got my phone leaning on and post it in this clip. I'm using pigtail spikes from a builder's yard to hold the phone up while I film. Anyway, my friend Katie, uh, who I'm seeing later today, has said, would I save her some of the black tulips? So I am going to, I've got an ordinary uh, border fork and I'm just going to tickle underneath these beautiful queen of the night so that they'll lift more easily. Look, if I get under here, you'll see, um, stick in the border fork. This is where it helps being a, a lady with a little weight because um, then you've really got some weight to get into our thick clay. So I'm tickling my, tickling my tulips, tickling the tulips. And that means, watch, I can now pull them straight out of the ground with the bulb on. Can you see that? And here's another one. And if they're, if they're holding on tight to the thick clay, Right, I can give them a bit more. Now that's no good. <laughs> so, this one I'm going to give to my friend Andrew. This one I'm going to give to my friend Katie. Waste not, want not. That's what I say. And I've got a bucket here. So the tulips for Andrew go in one, and the tulips for Katie go on the other. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn you off, guys, because I actually need to do this job. So uh, I'll turn you off for a second. And then we'll go and get on with some other things that I had lined up from yesterday's clip. The fun things to do on a wet weekend in May in the garden. See you in a minute. So here are my pigtail spikes. Uh, I think <laughs> just bought from, a, from an ordinary builder's yard. We've got loads of them around the place. They're really, really useful. And this is what I'm sand my phone in when I'm doing some filming. <laughs> It's very, very basic here. Nothing too technical. Just keep it really simple. So, look what I'm doing. I'm digging up my tulips so that I've got the bulbs on the end. And I'm going to give my friend Katie the whole shebang. Uh, she can then cut off the flower heads. They're a bit blown but um, and thoroughly wetted after all this rain and wind. A bit weather beaten. Uh, so they're no good for selling. But... She can enjoy them for a few days. Um, and so long as she leaves the leaves with the bulb, so she cuts them quite carefully, she can then let the bulbs, I would, if I were her, I would just heal them into the ground in her garden where they'll settle in and the bulbs will absorb sunshine and goodness and give all that goodness to the uh, the leaves will absorb sunshine and goodness. We'll give all that goodness to the bulb and hopefully they'll flower for her next year. This is a bit of a hit and miss process, I will admit. But, you know, gardens are expensive and uh, bulbs are expensive. So my friend Katie, who hates waste, quite rightly, would rather try this and see how she goes. So good for Katie. I'm going to fill up a big dolly tub with them and take them over to her later. So, so here I have a bucket load of cut for my friend Andrew and a bucket of ones that I've lifted with the bulbs on for my friend Katie. If I were advising you to start with tulips, I would say have fresh bulbs every year if you're looking for a real show uh new bulbs will give you a bigger head more height and you'll they'll do they'll do really really well for you it's a more guaranteed show if you're using new bulbs every year 
and I use new bells every year because I need the show. I'm a flower farmer and I need to sell them. So I need the bulbs to look amazing. But my friend Katie, who's just gonna heal these into the ground in the meadowy patch of her garden. She doesn't have an enormous garden, um, but she's got near the house, she's got a terracey place where you can sit outside and have lunch and uh, have a nice time. And really like 10 foot away, she's made a bit of a meadowy patch and it is very, very pretty. And these queen of the night can be just tucked into the meadowy patch and if they come back next year, then that's a bonus. If they don't, she won't mind. But it's a nice experiment. And to have tulips growing through long grass in a meadowy patch in your garden is such a good idea. It's so beautiful. Um, along with having a meadowy patch in your garden, which is also very beautiful and gives you masses of food and forage for your local insects. And as Fabrizio always says, if you look after the invertebrates, the rest of the food chain will look after itself. This is the, uh, the memo that you need to carry around in your head. Look after the invertebrates and the rest of the food chain will look after itself. So our Katie, by having a little bit of a meadow garden in her garden, giving over really about half of her garden into meadow, is really helping her environment. There we go, lecture over. <laughs> Let's get on, we've got other things to do. If you're ever looking for me in the garden, you want to try and listen out for this sound. It's the sound of the trundling, the trundling trolley, which <laughs> I have with me most of the time. Top tip, I say, always close the gate behind you because there are monk jack deer in these parts and we don't want them eating the garden. Just a bit more on the subject of replanting tulips which have already flowered. The simpler, this is a ballpark rule of thumb, okay? The simpler the tulip, the more likely they are to settle in and come back for you. So complicated doubles or anything that doesn't look as though it's closely related to a species tulip. So these are really straightforward, uncomplicated queen of the night. These are more, that was tea cake running around in the background. She's my border terrier, tea cake the border. Anyway, the simpler the tulip, the more likely this whole process of sticking them in the ground, having been dug up after flowering, is to work. It is really important that the leaves are planted with the bulb, okay? So if you end up losing the flowers, snipping them off, that's fine. It's the leaves which will absorb the sunshine and the goodness and feed the bulb for flowering next year, okay? Oh, look, and here is the very beautiful and glamorous Katie James, with my artist. Princess Lena Bunches. With Princess Lena Bunches. My goddaughter made me. <laughs> now, um, Katie, what is your idea with these tulips? Oh, so Monty last Friday said that um, he felt that the bulb growth better effect is greatly enhanced by pops of dark tulips. So, um, my very good friend, Common Farm, Fla Common Farm Flowers, has um, given me some dark purple tulip bulbs which are going to go in, in between the Camassia and the, so whisper it, I have developed yellow rattle. Oh that is a, an achievement Katie. And yellow rattle is the secret to a good meadow. It and is. it's very difficult to grow. It's and a sign of an it. exceptional gardener. <laughs> so this next spring is going to have pinging up all over it, lovely queen of the night tulips. What as a well treat. As, as well as Camassia, and then they got, we've got the Oxy daisies. Oh. And this is the, you know, this is the trendy thing, is you let some of your London lawn 
go to Meadow. Well, it's beautiful, Katie. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. <laughs> oh, look, Katie, can you show us through your beautiful Bayou Blue Gate? Come this way. Oh. Now this is a garden. Would you look at this gorgeous wild patch? This is Katie's studio at the bottom of the garden where she paints her beautiful pictures. Uh, she's very popular for portraits, not just of people, but also of dogs. And look, imagine achieving this in, in London and it's mixed in, there are vegetables, there are sweet peas. It is a cornucopia of wild heaven. I have wild to say, garlic. it's quite an achievement. Wild garlic, I've just been given a pot of wild garlic pesto. Happy days, Katie. Oh, and the thalictrum just coming along nicely. How lovely, thank you for sharing it with us. <laughs> well, there's nothing like a day gardening to make you need a bath and a hair wash. It is the best way to clean your hands. Did you know that? If you've got very muddy gardener's hands, then washing your hair will clean your hands really well. Um, so I hope you've had a really nice time watching today's clips. If you enjoy our clips, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell and you will be told when there is another um another clip coming up uh next one is going to be all about splitting cowslips so i hope you enjoy that anyway see you in a day or so thanks for watching bye <laughs>